Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in the great Per Weberg. How are you doing, my friend? I'm fine. Um, it's a sunny day in Stockholm, so I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty good. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty fair to say, despite all the awesome heavy metal and extreme metal that Swedes make, it's a very happy group of people. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> yeah, we tend to be fairly nice. Nice. I agree. I agree. It's great to see you. Uh, you've had a very prolific time. I think you've been working on projects. It's, it feels like as a, a fan and a journalist, it seems like you have something new every six months or less. Well, I always try to keep busy. And uh, there's been quite a few things to work on the last year. It hasn't so much to do with uh, the pandemic as such. It's, it's stuff that was started before we even knew what a pandemic was, you know. So I've always tried to do stuff you know, way ahead, so to speak. So it's the difference now is that since you're, I'm not on tour or playing live. It's like it's maybe a little bit more intense. You get to do more stuff before you would do recordings or jams with people. Then you would go for a tour for a while. Then you come back home and you continue. But now it's just you just <laughs> hammer it out. <laughs> Right, you're working kind of in a in a bubble, which is yeah, exactly. be very good for creativity. It might not be as good for your, you know, your soul. But uh, and you, you know, I know that you know you've been in countless bands. People know the resume. You, you, uh, you know, I'm sure most of your music and your career has been, you know, in a room with other people creating and collaborating. And I imagine this is probably you probably expected to be on tour or play festivals last year. And this has probably been one of the longest stretches of your career off the road. Uh, I've never been off the road as long as this. Uh, the, the last time I played this few gigs, which is basically none in a year, is when I was 12. <laughs> nice. That makes sense, actually. Thinking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my heart goes out to you and your peers. And, you know, again, uh, as I often say, the industry is not just websites and bands. It's venues it's venue operators it's tour bookers it's merch sellers it's tour bus drivers it's everybody uh crew has been devastated as well so you know while there are worse problems in the world to not being able to play a show or go on tour this is a livelihood for thousands upon thousands of people yeah it's it's really heavy times i mean people that work within the event and arts industry are are not the only ones i guess it it concerns Anyone who who travels with their work, really, um, it's a difficult time for, regardless of what the work might be. But if you have to go places, you know, and do stuff, it's definitely a lot harder. And like the same for sports people, you know, when you have a, a gathering of many people, many people, it, it doesn't it doesn't work, obviously. So tough times. But I try to stay optimistic and positive and see how this uh, vaccine thing is panning out. It, we're maybe a little bit slower than you guys over there, but I think in Sweden, which is a small country, there's not that many of us. So I think we'll be done by the end of the summer, maybe with, with everyone that wants to have the vaccine, so. That's awesome. I love to hear that. We seem to be going at a very brisk pace suddenly. I'm really glad the last few months have happened. I just got my first shot uh, last week and uh, feeling not bad at all. So I encourage everybody. I know everybody is feeling a lot of fatigue. I'm sure it's the same for you. Stockholm is a lively city with a bristling nightlife and music and clubs and art is part of life. And uh, as is the rest of America in the big cities and then small places and I know people are burned out and tired of hearing about it and tired of wearing a mask, but I think we have to just go a little bit longer to get over the finish line. We're not there yet, but we're getting, I see like light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, eyes on the prize, uh, I guess. So I don't know, it's, it's, it's the, for me personally, it's not a, a big thing to, with the mask or anything. Uh, it, you just do what you have to do to get rid of this as, soon as possible basically so that's what you do we're gonna persevere i promise we're gonna be okay and uh in the meantime luckily we still have music to talk about so i'm really excited to talk about you have a new ep coming out all is well in the land of the living but for the rest of us lights out very grim sounding <laughs> but a very cool record it's a very different ep 
your musical style it's in your wheelhouse but it's like i like this very unique apart from other stuff you've been doing of late yeah it's a it's basically a continuation of of the first full-length album i did uh, that was released two years back all the lyrics on this new ep are it's the same story there's a track on the first album that's called anywhere the blood flows um so all the lyrics on the new ep is just a continuation of the the, those same lyrics so it's basically a, a long story kind of musically it's it's in the same same landscape as as the first album there's a few ingredients on this new one that i haven't tried before and which is cool and you know it's it's fun to to work with things that you haven't done before or maybe done in a different way than you did it before so and there's even a guitar solo on this one. <laughs> I know, I know. You let it go. I, I, I like it. Um, you know, I know. You know, you could almost go to any instrument. I know when you start to write, but I know it's usually piano or guitar for you. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. It was fun to hear the solo. I was like, oh, look at that. There's a guitar solo now. But I love the storytelling, and I think that's the thing about your solo career that's really cool is you're really getting to tell these stories yourself now this is your project your name's on it whether it's you or one of your bands you're in and it's really this narrative that you're getting to share from you which is great i think you know you you know you really uh come into your own as a storyteller it's important yeah lyrics are fun to write but i'm um, i'm very slow in the lyric part i don't think i'm the only one when it comes to lyrics it's 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 not an easy it doesn't come easy so to speak uh, it's it's a lot of back and forth and so on. I don't want to, I don't want the lyrics to be, you know, I want them to be layered in a sense that it could be just escapism, but it could also be um, mean a little bit more, you know, if, if you want to sort of dive into it. It's gonna give you what you get out of it, right? You can, you can yeah, exactly. you wanna find. If you were looking for something, you'll find it there. Um, and if you're not looking, you won't. Um, I love the, I love some of the guitar stuff on here. There's a lot of cool little layers. I had to listen, I had to listen a few times to catch it all. I was taking some notes and I was like, oh, I hear like some really cool stoner stuff, some psychedelic early Pink Floyd kind of Sid Barrett-y rhythms and, and layers and things. It's really cool. Is there uh, are you just kind of continuing out from your earlier influences? There's some new thing going on where you're adding these cool guitar layers now. I don't know, like for sure that the last the last part, which is called Lights Out, is the one with a guitar solo because when it wasn't, I didn't intend to, but when, when it was done, like the whole song was done and I did the vocals and it just felt a little bit Floydy, you know, like it's got a good Pink Floyd vibe to it. And then I thought I'll give this, I'll give the solo thing uh, a try, and did my did my best Gilmore interpretations. <laughs> so, but it it came out cool. It was one of those things that was maybe the last thing I did on the whole album. Right so. on. Yeah, it's, it works. And uh, yeah, I was gonna say it seems like this was written obviously almost almost created in the order the running order it's in i know that's not always the case when you make an album or an ep but uh, it's pretty cool this as a piece of music it works uh i i definitely caught those floyd vibes um i've been listening to a lot of weird like floyd soundtrack stuff actually that i think is less popular but is more of my favorite stuff like uh more and obscured by clouds and stuff like yeah, that. So yeah, I, think are... I love obscured by clouds. Some of that I found in here too, like a little bit. Like I said, almost like it could. They would be like a really cool movie that should go along with the CP. Um, you know, it feels very cinematic, like a soundtrack. Cool. Thanks a lot. So you know, obviously, uh, a weird time in the world. It's hard to play gigs right now. There aren't any or many. And you, you know, in your career, you you usually you sell an album by handing it to somebody at a show. So you know. Um, it's got to be a little odd to just kind of put it out into the world and hope for the best. I know streaming is not helpful. And obviously, you look, you have a following and, and, a, and a reputation and people come to you, you know, they're following your career. So that's cool. I hope, you know, that there's some help on that end. But, uh, you know, it's hard in a time with no shows to sell music. It's, it's got to be hard. To be honest, as for sales, I don't, I think these days you don't expect so much from it like that. Not, not to be negative, but it's, it's like... I'm so used to like the whole 
you know, the whole thing, you, you write and record an album and it's done and then you go on the road, you know, and it's not like that at the moment. Um, so we'll see what the future brings, you know, uh, I'll just keep on working and writing and recording stuff, but the ambition is definitely to go out and play live this time uh, as soon as it's possible. So um, I've, I've rehearsed solo stuff with um, uh, friends here in Stockholm as well. So it shouldn't be that far away as for what, what, what I can do or what we can do as a live band. It's just wait, waiting for the go. <laughs> right, as soon as we get the green light, we'll be all there. I, I've been saying this, as soon as it's safe and, and it's acceptable yeah. to people, I'm a, you know, we're gonna buy all the merch, we're gonna drink all the beers, we're gonna hug all our <laughs> friends. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be like a hundred birthdays in a row because every show is going to like even just to go to the bar is going to feel yeah. awesome like under normal circumstances and again i think things are reopening and and i'm i'm you know cautiously optimistic that we're going to be okay and it's we're going to we're going to get it back i think so too nice you have uh so much material to draw from i imagine when the time comes to go back out on the road and play a tour you can play this whole ep you can play the first record you can play at you know stuff selections uh, from all your bands, if you wanted to, that, you know, you, you felt, you know, represented you, how would you, uh, you know, start a set list today beside this new EP? Ooh, uh, well, I would definitely do, do most of the stuff from, from what's being released now. I have uh, recorded, like, the majority of stuff for the next full length as well, but it's not finished yet, and I'm not going to finish it until the summer so when that will be out i wouldn't know so there's there's more material it would be fun to throw in the odd cover song as well that's always fun especially if you can do something weird with it or <laughs> so i i think that's entertaining myself when i go to a show especially for someone for an artist in in the same situation as me where there's not you know there's not a catalog of 10 albums of music where you can just cherry pick songs from each album and, and you would have more than a, and, and a show's worth of material. It's, a, it's always fun to, to see if there's only like a couple of albums. Um, it's always fun to try something else for the musicians and for the audience, I think. Nice. Do you have a favorite cover song ever that just as a fan? There's so, there's so many songs that you would like to play, but there's also so many songs that you don't want to ruin, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so um it could it could be anything and also these days it's like with um there's so many of these tribute albums coming out so if if you mention one song it's it's going to be burned within a month because someone would have recorded it so <laughs> no <clears throat> i've actually started just for fun and this is not uh, like a deadline project or anything but I've started to record cover songs for the fun of it and try to put it out as they're as they're done basically I've done two so far they're not they're not mixed yet and so I was thinking I was going to do two songs from the 60s two from 70s 80s 90s and so on so I I, I did one odd choice already which is a warrior soul song wow I love that band that's a great uh great I can't imagine how cool it's going to be to have you do your take on a Warrior Soul song. Because that's such a good band. And so it's still underrated. Yes. Uh, they sort of fell between the chairs, I guess, back, back in the day. I like them. I thought they were a cool band. Super so. cool. Yeah, I love Corey's voice and uh, such a cool band. And again, very ahead of their time. Uh, so cool. You have a whole new record you're working on, this covers thing that might happen at some point. Really cool. Um, I imagine that like, you know, obviously, you know, life is going on while we're all going through this stuff together, but you could probably get up any day and just like write a new song if you want to every day, whatever the inspiration, you know, comes to you when you do it, when you get up to go make music or practice or rehearse, what do you go to first? Is it whatever you're feeling at the moment? Do you mostly pick up a guitar first now? Yes, uh, because it's easy and you just sit on the couch and noodle <laughs> and sometimes you know you have to practice because you have to learn a, a song for something like a project or whatever but usually when it's just you just play because it feels good that would be strumming on a guitar you know keyboards and and, and bass are are more instruments where i'm 
supposed to do something, you know, like learning a song or record or while guitar is more like uh, just a thing that you enjoy, I enjoy. And, and maybe after like 30 plus years of, uh, you know, keyboard and piano, you've kind of done everything you're going to do there in terms of something mm -hmm. new and interesting. There's always something to discover, but I feel like, you know, if guitar is not your first thing you ever played, you kind of, you know, there's more uh, room to grow. Yeah, but I think that's, I've, I've grown to, with the to the first album and, and this new one, uh, the, I've started enjoying playing keyboards a bit more again because it's definitely about exploring some new avenues for me and that's really exciting so I've really enjoyed trying to work with new sounds and and the way you approach the instrument as well like on the new EP there's uh, the third part which is called but for the rest of us is is basically and I promised myself I wouldn't edit anything or uh, so I just did an improvisation for six minutes and everything that's on there I arranged according to the improvisation afterwards and I've never worked like that before so that was that was exciting uh, for me it was I learned a bunch of stuff from doing it that way because I've never done things like that before and I sometimes put uh you know something experimental <clears throat> mix or you know some kind of yeah. to make you think and approach things differently that's really cool yeah i tend to like to work within um, what do you call it for lack of a better description within a box you know when you set kind of a, a limit to what you can and cannot do i like that way and to me sometimes that's more creative than the worst thing that someone can say is do whatever you want because that's it's so difficult you know to me it's easier to have some guidelines or whatever you're working with because if you hate it you can throw the guidelines out the window and say ha i did something else but when the, it, it's it's always very difficult when when people say do whatever you like yeah that's a tough one sometimes anything. yeah but sometimes it depends on what kind of music like what genre of music it is i mean obviously people throw something you know 70s rock at you you wouldn't use certain like a certain language within that kind of music you try to to record it or with a style that suits the music but sometimes it can be pretty tough if people say that and that's why even when i do things on my own or just for my own sake like these albums i try to set up a few guidelines for the songs as well because i know it's going to it's going to trigger me so to speak nice in a positive way yeah um, yeah <laughs> Per Wiberg, it's so great to catch up with you and see you here. Thank you for supporting Ghost Call. Thank you for hanging out with us and sharing your process. Not always easy to do. I'm super excited about all this new music you have coming out. Uh, all is well in the land of the living, but for the rest of us, Lights Out is coming out May 14th. Thank you for hanging out with us, and I hope to see you again soon in the interwebs or here in another interview when your full length is ready. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Nice talk. Nice talk.